I'm recording this from this point forward. So I'm going to actually introduce myself again. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Jen Bonet with the Creative Coast and uh, welcome to today's webinar on being seen in turbulent times. We have our uh, Creative Coast member, Lisa Kanda with LK Advisors, who's been through, uh, unfortunately, other turbulent times, and she's going to share her experience with, with how you can help get your business through this time. And without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Lisa. Wonderful. Thank you, Jen, and welcome, everybody. And I'm going to say, if you haven't already, go ahead and mute yourself. Um, we are going to have time for questions afterwards, and, uh, we, and we can do that yeah, for, with our unmuting, but for right now. Let me share my screen so we can get started. All right. All right, so we did the, uh, the change to the topic, staying visible in times of uncertainty. And the reason we did that is, number one, of what's just happened in our country. And, and because I was the person already slated to do the topic, I actually have some experience in this. Uh, not, ne not necessarily at this level because it's a worldwide pandemic, but clearly I, I've definitely had uh, some experience in dealing with disaster and uncertainty. So who am I? As Jen was kind enough to introduce, my name's Lisa Kanda. Uh, my company is LK Advisors. Uh, of course, I'm always encouraging you to connect with me on LinkedIn uh, because that's very viable, especially right now. But um, I started my business in 2008. So at the beginning of the financial crisis, I lived in New Jersey at the time. Uh, I've moved to Savannah three years ago. So at, the, at New Jersey, 2008, we had uh, that financial crisis and I survived through that. Uh, prior to that, I, I was working in the corporate world in marketing and so my entire career has been in this area. And I've shifted, of course, my work to digital strategy because especially in 2008, that was when things were just starting and now it's exploded. And we're gonna talk more about how you can stay visible using some of those digital strategies. Now, I mentioned some of the previous experience I've had in dealing with this. Uh, and on October 29th of 2012, uh, in New Jersey, but also the entire East Coast, was slammed with Superstorm Sandy. And what makes this relevant is it, it was completely catastrophic, number one. Uh, and similar to the feelings we all may be feeling right now, this is catastrophic. What we're Not only what we're feeling right now, but what potentially is gonna happen because there's so much uncertainty in the next days, weeks, months. And, and clearly the people that had to deal with, with this cat catastrophe experienced many things. And I was on the front line of that, uh, not only with my business, but I was a consultant and I still am actually a consultant to the Small Business Development Center in New Jersey. And we, similar to what Jen had said with uh, the SBAC here, uh, were the first ones on the line of defense to help the small businesses cope with this, provide them with tools, provide them with resources, and to help them. And I, for two years, I was working with many hundreds of businesses uh, in dealing with uh, the aftermath of Sandy. And you know, I, I'm here to give, give you hope and encouragement. I'm here to let you know we're going to see the end of this. We, I, that, this, is, this is going to... Uh, get, we're going to get through it. That's basically where I'm, I'm, I want to just encourage it. We're going to get through it. One of the things that I, I wanted to mention is what's called the Stockdale paradox, because you know we were talking about earlier before we came on um, recording, is where are we? How are we feeling mentally, emotionally? This this is a shock uh, that many businesses are going through. And uh, Jim Collins in Good to Great talked about the Stockdale paradox, which came about from uh, James Stockdale, who's a Naval officer who's actually imprisoned in a POW camp during the Vietnam War. And the way he was able to survive it was through this uh, thought process. First, we have to retain faith that you will prevail in the end, regardless of the difficulties. And at the same time, confront the most brutal of facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. So it's a paradox because you need that optimism. You need to know we're going to get through this. We are a strong country. We are entrepreneurs. We are the ones that can pivot and make things happen quickly. But at the same time, you have to know exactly where you are. You can't stick your head in the sand. You can't say, oh, well, it's going to go away tomorrow. That's not going to happen. So that's why this topic is so relevant because you really need to step up your game and get visible. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. 
trust me, there is light there. We will get past it. I would highly encourage you, if you ha uh, have time tomorrow, get on that call at 11 o'clock uh, with Jen and, Jen, what was his name again? I'm sorry, with SBAC. She's up in Unmute, unmute. Okay. Um, Tony O'Reilly is the executive director of this Small Business Assistant Center in Savannah, Georgia. Okay, so that's tomorrow. Uh, please do that because we'll, it, it's important because there is a new way. There is, as entrepreneurs, we just need to pivot. We need to just get into the trenches and say, now what do I do? And let's talk about some of the things that we can do because I've got some things to share. All right, so your marketing strategy and your focus on digital is what I want to stress because digital is the way to now to actually connect with your, your, uh, your clients, your customers, uh, your audience, whoever needs to hear from you. I'm grateful today that we didn't have what we have uh, today in 2012. We didn't have the resources and the tools that are online that, that we have today. So we're in a better place to reach people and to make things happen. So I want you to think about pivoting in your goals because it's not business as usual. It's not the time to go dark. It's not the time to disappear. It's not the time to shrink. Instead, you wanna think about what short-term actions can I take for long-term results? How can I make things happen now and that we're gonna influence long-term? I also want you to think about your shift in commitment because your discipline is needed to confront the reality. Discipline in whatever things you need to be doing, consistently showing up every day. It's, again, not the time to be in your pajama pants every day uh, because we're you know, sequestered at home and, and we can't do it the norm. It's a time to really step up your game. Uh, and have that faith you're going to prevail and pivot and change. Pivot and change is where I want you to start thinking. So your digital communication during uncertainty or disaster or whatever we're facing right now as we look ahead are, are three common threads that you need to think about. You want to communicate, communicate, communicate. I mean, you're, you're already getting a lot of communication uh, from all kinds of folks, but how are you communicating as a business? How are you reaching out? How are you... Uh, letting your, your, your thoughts and where you are and what your business is doing known. Also, how are you engaging? How are you having a two-way conversation or one to many a conversation, not just outbound messages saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And how are you really connecting? How are you serving? That's really important right now because people need that. And you have to stress these three components when you're looking forward. You also need to be human. Being, and people need to see people right now. It is not the time to hide behind a corporate uh, entity or a brand name or a logo. They need to see you and to stand out. Being authentic. And these are things we've talked about all along in a digital strategy, even more important right now. So authenticity means you know, you're struggling too. You don't have to hide the fact that this is difficult. You don't have to hide the fact that you, know, that you had to lay off people, that, you know, we're struggling right now, but it is important that you're authentic and saying, but we're going to get through this and here's my plan. And you need to be empathetic because clearly we're all going through this together and having empathy for other people and for yourself really counts. But also it's not about selling right now. I know that's hard to hear because we all want to say, but how am I going to, you know, do what I need to do and make money. But trust me on this one, you will sell. People will support you, but this is not the time to only be blasting people about buy, buy, buy. There are opportunities and ways you can. We'll talk about that in some of the examples, but I want you to just do that pivot and that shift to be human, authentic, empathetic, connect, um, and engage. Now, one of the things I talk about with most of my clients when I, I'm counseling them and giving them strategic direction is what I call the business success trifecta. This triangle, and I always do the triangle, you know, it's a visual. There are three major important things to think, think about in your digital strategy. Your website, your email marketing, and your social media. The top is your website because that is something you own. As long as you pay your hosting fees, as long as you, you know, keep your domain, no one can take that away from you. You have complete 100% control over that. So that website, if you don't have one, you better have one or get one soon. If you have a website, pay attention, make sure it's updated. Email marketing. Again, you, you probably have gotten a, a bunch of emails in the last week or two, but
but it's also your way of connecting with people and you control that again something you have control over and then social media which is our natural inclination to jump to right you know we have our connections on facebook and instagram and, and all the different platforms but please remember that is rented space you do not own that and these platforms can change in nanoseconds i've seen it happen they can take things away from you they can they can put rules and regulations in place um, that can hurt you or at least not help you all right so just remember that they're important components you need to use them but this, this trifecta matters, having all three of these components in place. So as I mentioned, your website, you own it. You wanna drive traffic to your website. You want people to go there because that's the content you, that you can manage and have control over. If you do not have Google Analytics set up, it is free, set it up. That gives you data. Data gives you information so that you can make good strategic decisions. It must be mobile friendly and responsive. You must everyone is on their device right now everyone especially now so you make sure you're, that people can access you uh, that way and again i said keep it updated i'm also going to mention something called google my business if you're not familiar with this tool it is a free tool that google gives you you need to make sure if you don't have this set up to set it up now do not wait and keep it updated now, there are some things that are in place right now because of the COVID-19 that Google's shifting. Just as I mentioned, these are all things that you don't have control over, but they're going to be helpful to you. So there's some updating uh, that they're so asking you to do. They're asking you to look at your Google My Business page. Make sure that you update your hours. Make sure you update any of the information there. You know, if it's because of the, you know, the shutdowns and, and things that we have to do, say that you're temporarily closed. You're not closed. You're temporarily closed. You've made a shift in hours, et cetera, et cetera. And one thing I just read, literally just within the last few hours, that they're limiting now reviews on Google My Business because I'm always encouraging businesses to get reviews across the board, but especially on Google. And because of some of the negative reviews that people are posting, giving one stars because of the situation we're in, because businesses have had to close or they're not communicating quickly enough, Google has made a very, I think, smart decision to not allow businesses to get these negative reviews because it's not their fault. So there are no new reviews right now. They're putting a temporary hold on it. That's important for you to know, uh, but hopefully when things calm down, they'll put that back in place. The other area I talked about was email marketing. So what's the current state right now? Well, if you've been getting all these emails, right? There are three different types of emails you'll probably have gotten, right? And these are people that, you know, uh, they're either giving you immediate information you need to know, whether it's from government entities or your banks or airlines or uh, doctors or really important information that you need to know right now. Then there's that middle category, which are your brands that you actually have a connection to that are saying, okay, here's some information, not as critical, but we're letting you know some critical information, uh, important information. And then there's that third one, which this is the one that I just shake my head and this is what I don't recommend you do. These are the ones that somehow along the line, I've made a purchase from you five years ago, and suddenly you're gonna let me know you care about me. That, those are the emails that are, I, I would not recommend, but you've seen them in your inbox. But email is important if it's done well and it's done the right way. And if you haven't had an email list already, this is even more of a reason why. Don't wait, start it now. There's no reason you cannot have make sure you have that email form on that website and that you can't go to social media and say, hey, I want to communicate with your email. Make sure you subscribe to my list. Uh, you can still do that now because you can use this to communicate directly with your customers, your clients, uh, without having to go through social media channels. Um, and then very important, do not spam or only sell. Very important, do not spam or only sell when you're using social media. I mean, when you're using email because people are not going to be willing to hear that right now, especially in times of, of this uncertainty. So, well, they we said, why is it relevant? We still check our email. It's not going to go away. You know, people may be on their phones more or they may be taking some digital, you know, respites because it's getting to be a little bit too much, but we're going to still check our inboxes. So it's not going to disappear. And it's, you can use email to get interactive. You can ask questions. You can ask people to reply back. You can do polls. There are a lot of things you can do with email as well. So you use it as a real communication tool. So two examples. Uh, one, of course, is I'm saying, yeah, don't yell or sell. And I, I 
blocked out who they are because in their uh, giving being sensitive, I don't want to blast somebody, but clearly they're, they're, they're just all caps, screaming and yelling, bye, bye, bye. Do not do that. I do give kudos to uh, my dentist when I received this email because they spelled it out. They explained here in two different places. Here are the sanitation processes. Really important right now. You can reschedule your appointment. We understand. But you know what? If you can make it because we, we can handle it, you can stay in your car till your appointment time is ready. So you don't have to sit in the common area if you feel uncomfortable. So they've laid out very well in an email. Here's what's going on. Here's how we can still serve you. You can still come in for your dental uh, procedures uh, and feel safe. And I thought that was very, very well done. When it comes to social, the opportunity is now. If you've already been on social, kudos, still an opportunity for you because right now social media consumption is growing by leaps and bounds because people are home, people are bored, people are looking on their feeds. So you do have an opportunity to stand out, get visible and uh, keep be relevant, be relevant and that we want you to do that. Now, the, this slide has a lot of information on it, so I'm going to take a little bit of time to go through it because it's really important when it comes to how you're going to show up in social media, when it comes to your content strategy. So before you dive into whatever platform you're using, you need to think about what are you going to share? What is the content and how is that relevant? So first, you want to consider the importance of the user's intent and sentiment when you're creating that content. Let me explain what those things mean. This is important. So you want to understand your customer's needs, right? User intent is more important and it's going to grow. So what does your customer want? What is your, what are their needs? Where are they right now? And I'm sure you can share some of that because you're there. Remember that empathy I was talking about? Remember that human, human element? We are feeling a lot of the same things. We're, we're emotionally attached to, to what's happening right now. So understand that, that intent is there. Understand what that reader or that person as they're scrolling the, uh, through their feed wants to see, right? We're seeing a lot of stuff, you know, depending on how your, your feed is curated because of how you interact with content. It could be a lot of news stories. It could be a lot of COVID-19 stuff. It could be a lot of puppies and, and cats. It could be, but think about how you're going to show up as they're scrolling through that feed. Really important because you don't want to come across in a way that is so disruptive that they're going to hide you and that's going to be a negative. That's what I wanna get with right now. Negativity is going to hurt you and it's gonna hurt you when it comes to the algorithms because we're looking to get organic. Organic means not paid, right? Because we don't have money right now to be putting in paid advertising. We need to show up and get the algorithm to work for us. And the algorithm, I'm gonna give you some, some strategies to do that. And the first one is how are you gonna show up so people interact positively with your content? Because the more that people interact with your content and are positive about that, and that these platforms see you as showing positive information, the more you're going to get traction in the newsfeed and the more you're going to be seen. It's proven through all the algorithms. That's what they're looking for. So you want to stay on that track. Okay, so you want to see what that, you want to really key into what does that viewer want to see? And are you answering what their, some of their problems are? I mean, I've seen it already with many of the uh, restaurants and, and businesses that, that provide you know, food and you know, that they can you know, have curbside pickup and that you, know, you can order through all the different uh, food service uh, providers that you know, they'll deliver for you. So absolutely, you know, we still need to eat, get it to me. How are we gonna make that happen? So think about it in that way. How can I answer some of the problems you may have? If it's doing more videos, if it's doing more instruction where that you could still show up virtually, that's what you want to think about, okay? And again, I mentioned, all right, how's that already looking in that news feed? Really important. Is there, you know, that I call it thumb stopping. I'm using a visual here, but think about the thumb and you're on your, your device and you're thumbing through. What you want is thumb stopping. You want someone to say, oh, here's something I want to read. Here's something I want to interact with. Here's something I want to look at. That's the kind of content you're, um, you're going to move for. So the content typically that's going to do that is going to be informational, educational, and entertaining. We want to be entertained. That's just the way it is. So depending on the type of service and product you have, you want to think about how can you do it in a way that it follows, falls up in one of those three categories or a combination. Okay. 
And I mentioned earlier, Facebook definitely puts a high relevance on sentiment. Sentiment. Sentiment, and it means what is being said about your business and is the audience engaging in a positive way. If people are hiding your posts and people are putting the, the negative and the say, you know, they're unhappy and they're, they're not liking things and they're saying negative things in the comments, that's not going to help you. You want positivity. It's really important that you think of it in that regard. So that's all going to help you when it comes to your content strategy. And by the way, if you have questions, I, I didn't mention this earlier, be sure to put them into the chat. I know uh, Jen's going to uh, monitor the chat. I'm going to have time for questions at the end. So if there's anything that's coming up here that you have a question about, please feel free to, uh, to put that in the chat. And then we'll also have uh, live questions at the end. Now, what are some ways you can engage with your audience? Definitely quizzes and polls. Uh, in fact, Facebook allows you to do polls uh, within, uh, right within there. And also Instagram does. Ask questions, ask people, trust me, ask them what they need or want, they'll tell you. Using video, video is engaging. I'm gonna show you a video, a slide on video uh, next. And it, it's truly one of the ways that Facebook is promoting and Instagram is promoting and does get engagement. User generated content, UGC. You, you, that means you're asking the, your audience to participate with you, to engage with you whether it's asking them to post a photo of their dog or show them how they're being showing extra kindness right now or acts of kindness, things like that. So you're asking them to share with you. So they're generating the content for you as some examples. And contests, I mean, even today, everyone likes a good contest. So if you can come up with a way to do a contest, that's always a very positive type of content for engagement. But there are three trends or opportunities I want you to look at if you're looking to expand or concentrate in certain areas when you're developing your content. Video, using stories, and chatbots. So video, there's some very important statistics about video and why I'm highly encouraging to use video as much as possible. And, and this does not have to be the high quality, high produced video that you, know, you may think, you know, YouTube has really put the whole gorilla video uh, right in front of us where people are much forget, much more forgiving. In fact, prefer in many ways to get your iPhone out or your droid, whatever, get your phone out. You can use your phone it is the easiest, simplest way to do video right now. But definitely 70% of consumers say they share video. 72% of businesses say video is improving their conversion rate. So they're using video, people are buying from them, they're converting. 52% of consumers are watching video more and it's actually influencing if they're making purchases. Executives um, are saying people are visiting their websites and then calling after that. So we know, you know, in our, if we have our customer hat on, we're gonna look and, and check things out before we purchase. Video helps people make those decisions, those buying decisions. And consumers are now watching more videos now more than ever. I mean, it's clear that video is definitely one of the best ways you can pr uh, promote and create content. Uh, Facebook gives video more presence in the newsfeed. They've even said that to us. They, if you do video, you, you're gonna be seen in the newsfeed more than uh, anything else. So consider how can you include video in your content strategy. The next area is called stories. If you're not familiar what stories are, is, these are short snippets of, of, of information and they're at the top of the feed, both in Facebook and Instagram. Where stories are important is you can archive them, but they're quick and short. But what is happening with stories is that they're actually giving more presence to your brand and people are actually looking at stories more now than the newsfeed. So there's a shift and attention. And if you're not doing stories, you're missing the opportunity for your brand to be seen or for people to know you're there. Remember, it's all about visibility. So you can't disregard including stories as a part of your content sharing, okay? So you need to share in your feed and you need to share in stories. And even within the tools, you can share to both at the same time. And if that's a, a shortcut to get you started, do it. And then as you get more familiar with using stories, you can start creating content just for stories down the road. But clearly it's gonna give you increased brand awareness because now you're in another part of the platform that you weren't being seen before. It does give you more engagement 
with your followers, because that's important, it gets you an opportunity to reach a younger audience. More younger folks actually engage with stories and are using stories, um, mostly on Instagram and Facebook. It can be a little daunting because you think it's time consuming, but once you get used to doing it and take this from someone who did not want to do stories for a long time, it gets easier. So just think about how you can incorporate stories into your content strategy. And then chatbots. Chatbots are, I mean, you've seen them already. If you go to a website, if you're on Messenger and Facebook, there are these little things that pop up and say, how can I help you? So chatbots are actually available uh, for your customers all the time, 24 seven. So it's a great way to keep that communication going. Uh, you can build FAQs to them. They're smart tools. So they're uh, artificial intelligence so that you can preload them with what you know are the frequently asked questions like what are your hours? Are you even open right now? I mean, with, the, with what's happening right now, I mean, you can really preload saying, hey, we offer delivery, we offer curbside service and people can get those answers very quickly. It's actually a very smart way to help, uh, help your customer and interact with them. It also, believe it or not, builds trust because they get answers quickly. It's an alternative to email because some people, as you say, you know, if, if you're not gonna read your email, a chat box can give you information. Again, it connects with a younger audience. It's the uh, statistics have shown that younger people are much more readily uh, going to a chat box before they're going to pick up the phone. We know some people just don't call. They'd rather do text messaging. Text messaging is a, a is chat box, a, a similar way of text messaging. It also gives you an opportunity to interact without having to leave the online experience. So if I'm on my phone and I have a question and the chat bot is there, I can still be on the website or on the Facebook page and ask the questions. I don't have to close everything out and go over here and do it. It's, it's all integrated together. And so that's helpful. So consider using them, uh, if not now, in, in a part of your plan going forward. Whew, all right. Now, I think we're, good, we're right on time on following schedule here. So one of the things I wanted to do is go through and give you some examples of some of the content that you can create. So I wanna inspire you. Uh, and I encourage you, because this is what I do, because this is the hat I typically wear. When I'm looking at my social media, I am usually looking at it with a different eye. I'm looking at it to saying, hmm, is this what I call thumb stopping? Is this really good content? Is this something that will engage or connect or give me good information or entertain me? So that's kind of the eye I'm looking at things. And some of our folks here in Savannah, and I have a couple examples actually from New Jersey because that's how my feed gets curated because of where I interact with stuff. But some of us are already doing some great content. So we want to look at those as models to what can we draw from that and how can we Think creatively. Come on, remember we're entrepreneurs. How can we look at what's already being done and then make it work for us? So I mentioned getting creative. Well, Bull Street Taco, they started giving out rolls of toilet paper with their taco boxes. Yeah, and they even you know, their FAQ, is this a joke? No, you know, is this a good idea? Don't know. Um, I have not followed up with them, but I thought it was really genius, you know, and, and pretty funny and definitely I thought, you know, kudos to them. So that very creative way of thinking about how do you get attention uh, and, and get people to, to notice you. Uh, a couple other things I saw, uh, you know, about the social distancing. I thought that was really cute. Somebody actually dressed up like a unicorn and walked through the grocery store <laughs> and then took, had somebody take video of it. So I thought that was, again, really creative. Another way, you know, people staying away, but clearly there's some, maybe an opportunity here for you to think differently. Uh, the uh, the coronavirus bug, so they actually turned their their uh, Volkswagen bug into a, a coronavirus bug. So, you know, just very entertaining, very funny. Uh, think about how you can get creative to do that. Another way you might want to look at your content is actually getting help. You don't have to be the sole person doing the sharing. You can ask people to help you. We are in a community willing to help, but sometimes we don't know how to help. There are a lot of people out there I know that are saying, what can I do? You know, I am home. Well, here are three examples I found, right? You know, uh, the Refinery Writing Studio put a post out there uh, on uh, behalf of the Flannery O'Connor uh, home because with this going on, no one's there and they need money to keep the place running. Great idea. 
Bayou Cafe, you know, uh, it posted with the Sandpiper Supply. So they're actually putting up at Sandpiper Supply is offering their parking lot to have the food trucks come. And then they're promoting that. So great idea. Thank kudos to Sandpiper Supply for doing that and, and allowing the food trucks a, a different day uh, to provide food for everybody. Uh, and then I saw a post in a Facebook group uh, where, you know, again, uh, just a local community, a local neighborhood is now looking for ways to bring a food truck in into their neighborhood um, to help provide, uh, you know, meals as well as, you know, providing, helping that business. So clearly if, if you're looking for a way to get the word out, go to your audience, go to the people you know and say, can you help me? And, and maybe they can help share your information. Uh, they can share your posts or maybe they can help you get creative on, on some things that you can do as well. I already mentioned this, but it, it bears repeating, use video. So here are three examples that, um, that I saw that were done very well. Barlow's is actually a landscaping and garden center up in New Jersey. Highly recommend, you know, I'm all about don't recreate the wheel. Look at what's already been doing, but it's being done well and just put your own spin on it. Just look at how you can you know, do something similar. You don't have to be completely 100% original every time. If people are doing something really well and you can see that it's working, how do you make that yours and use some of those same concepts? Absolutely, so Barlow's, kudos to them. I've actually worked with them. I worked them right after Sandy. So, and they are continuing a lot of the work that we talked about, doing a great job. So look at their feed, look at what they're doing. The fabulous Equinox Orchestra. They were live last night. I watched, anybody else watch? I watched, they're doing something awesome. They're asking people to buy tickets while they're watching. It's totally free, you don't have to, but people were posting, bought my ticket, bought my ticket. So people are buying virtual tickets, okay? And they got a, a concert out of it and it was wonderful. I think at one point I saw over 200 people were live viewing. And then we know our wonderful Savannah Bananas. They have done an amazing job all the time. They are really one of the best marketers I've seen out there. Learn from them, okay? They do video all the time. They're, they're, they're one of our great examples. So learn from them and, uh, and see how they're doing. Give incentives, all right? I know it's tough. I know it's tough, you know, we're all looking at the bottom line, but sometimes people need that little extra to get them to, to engage or to try something new. If they're not a current customer, if they're a new customer. So I thought this was really done well with the local farm bag. You know, they're offering a discount. This, put, this post is done well in so many different ways. You know, clearly they say, hey, special discount below. They talk about who they are. So if you don't know what farm bag is, they tell you who they are. They're saying, hey, we've got your back. Empathy, remember, empathy. They're offering a discount for new customers and a significant discount to healthcare providers. Okay, 50%. Awesome, right? So they're, they're combining, you know, how they're helping. Uh, of course, they're giving you a way to, if you have questions, contact us directly, make it really easy. But they're also saying, not only are you purchasing from us, you're purchasing from our local farms and other producers. So you're expanding your reach, not just through us and helping our business, but you're helping our community at large. Very well done. So if you can think of a way to give incentives and, and structure this uh, in a way that works, absolutely do it. And then Jen mentioned this briefly, but uh, I, it's really important right now, giving back. How can you be of service? And I know it's hard. I know it's hard when, you, when, it's, when you're thinking about how you're gonna make your rent or how you're going to pay certain bills and, and that, that attitude of, of, of less when we wanna be in a place of more. I, I get it. But if you can give back right now and be of service in some way, trust me, that's, that's the best place to be. So, here are some examples, uh, one in New Jersey, of course, Danny Steakhouse, they're giving 50% off meals to police officers and nurses as they're thanking, you know, and they live right next to the uh, hospital, by the way. I mean, their the business is close to the hospital. Uh, Savannah Ariels, you know, Chris Reba, I love you, Chris. You know, he's giving 100% of profits to local nonprofits, and I think he's matching it. Terrific job. And then even Coca-Cola, they're suspending all their advertising and, and refocusing their dollars to uh, support causes and things. So, you know, even the big guys are putting it out there. So just think, how can you give back? It can, doesn't have to be monetarily. It can be uh, different ways. Uh, I'll give you another example. Uh, this is also in New Jersey, the Grove in Shrewsbury. They're actually starting a whole campaign with the hashtag Grow Kindness Challenge. So they're just inspiring people to 
post about the kindness that they're doing and the kindness that they see in the community. So it doesn't have to be you know, other than more than, you know, how can we share what's going on in our communities and how can we give back to each other? So just some really good examples for you there. Okay, so I'm going to make sure I had time for questions. Uh, so some of the takeaways. Uh, what is your strategy to get through this? If you have not taken the time, because I know it's been tough. I know it's, we were talking about it before we even got online. Going through this, now that we're definitely on, on, in Savannah, and I know lots of parts of the country are on permanent shutdown, you know, it, it's, we're in for a, a really difficult time. But now is the time to take, a, a, put a plan in action. What is your strategy? How can you pivot quickly? Yes, pivot, change, make it happen. Don't sit back and wait. You cannot. You cannot sit back and wait. How, who are your audiences? So really look at who your audiences are. So it's not just the person who buys your end product. There are a lot of people out there that can help you. Who are some of your referral sources? Who are some of the people that you do business with? How can you collaborate with other people to help you share messaging? So that if I put something out on social, will you share that you put something on social? I'll share it. Collaborate and help each other, okay? Because you want to stay relevant. What can you do? What is within your means right now? You know, no, you can't spend money on advertising possibly. You don't have the funds, but there is a lot you can do. So get that plan together. Ask for help. Please ask for help. Take advantage of everything that's available coming to you. This is a big one because uh, the experience of Sandy and, and knowing what, that there were many people who didn't know what was available, our government's gonna come through. There are gonna be lots of opportunities. There are already disaster loans available through the SBA. Do not think that you can get through this without help and take advantage of everything that comes your way because it will get you through this, trust me. Think outside the box, get creative, do something different, have fun. You know, we, it can be easy to get into negativity. It can be easy to be in, down in the dungeons like, oh my gosh, you know, chicken little, the, fall, the sky is falling. No, have some fun. You know, I, I've seen some really creative videos out there. Some families are doing some things, you know, this whole social distancing, uh, being cooped up in houses with people. So have some fun with it, you know, uh, make some, some light heartedness of, you know, hey, we have, so we're all in the same boat together and we, and we want to uh, support each other. But stay visible now more than ever. Do not disappear. Do not shrink back. Instead, ratchet it up and say, I'm here, raise your hand, let people know that you're available, you're here to support them. And yes, you know, we, we want business to go on because we're going to come out on the other side of this and we want to survive that. So with that, any questions? Okay, Jen. <laughs> I've got questions, so I'm going to start it off with me. Okay. Um, if other people have questions, if you could type them into the chat, that would be awesome. Um, the first question I have is around stories. Mm -hmm. I pers uh, Kate's doing a great job on Creative Coast stories. I personally haven't done a lot of stories because I feel like they need to be higher quality than just the regular videos that I'm doing, like a Facebook Live or whatnot. I feel like the stories has to be a little bit more produced. Is, is, am I right? Am I wrong? No, uh, it's a good question. Uh, and no, stories do not need to be th that well produced. In fact, stories are actually on the other side of it. What you're probably seeing, because again, we judge what we're seeing. So, and, and when we have Kate for the Creative Coast doing an amazing job, I mean, I, I watch everything she does. She's doing a terrific job, but you don't have to ha be at that level. What's the important factor here is that people are seeing you show up. So when you're looking at the story, remember it's about visibility, you're looking across the top of either your Instagram or your Facebook feed. And people are going to do that instead of the thumb stopping this way vertically, they're doing it this way. And you want to show up there. That's, you know, it can be as simple as sharing somebody else who's talking about you. So if somebody does a great post about you, it's, it's simple as just putting that into your story. Um, so there are a lot of different ways you can do stories. It does not have to be high quality. It doesn't have to be 15 different vignettes. It can be one or two. In fact, I, my preference is no more than three. These people who do like 20 and 30 is a little much. Um, but what I'm asking for people to do right now, especially if it's brand new to you, just get in the feed. Get 
in the feed so people see you and that you don't, you're not forgotten because that you're making that connection, this, that marketing, you have to you know, touch people seven or eight times before they're triggered to know who you are. Just being seen is going to help. Okay, cool. Uh, another question from me is the chatbot features. Mm -hmm. Do you have recommended tools that people use for that or? Uh, there are a lot of them out there. Uh, ManyChat is one that's, uh, they have a free version and uh, pretty easy to use. And they have terrific support. Uh, another one's called Mobile Monkey. I believe another one's called Chat Fuel. I mean, you can Google it and they'll come up with a bunch of different ones. Uh, if anything, if anything, at least make sure your Facebook Messenger is enabled and that you've uh, put in your um, customized your answers there because in Facebook Messenger you can customize the answers uh, as far as when people do message you. So mm -hmm. if anything, do that. But uh, so some of the other tools, I know it's a lot more complicated, but those are the three I've known of uh, that mo a lot of people are using. Uh, and many chats probably one of the easiest that I know of. M A N Y chat. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Questions? Anybody have anything to share as far as what they're doing or what they're thinking about doing? We can crowdsource some ideas for people too. Like, what, what, what do you face with and do you have, you need some ideas? <laughs> yeah, so I guess on a comment there, this is Jen again. Um, you know, we started this hashtag good news. Um, Kate shared it through our email. Well, we've upped our email to be weekly, right? So we can share what webinars are coming up this week because I am very quickly trying to build out three to five webinars every week. So, so paying attention to that being on our email list is important so you get that. But also we're sharing good news there and on a, a hashtag good news channel on our blog, I'm doing a post on different companies that are somehow doing something or individual entrepreneurs or companies that are doing interesting things uh, to help either their customers or our community during this time. And, and just to share good news. So it's a little bit like the challenge. We are, I am, we, Kate and I are curating company or ideas and, and people. So if you have something that you want to share about your company and you don't want it to sound self-serving, you can send it to us and we'll share it for you. And then you can like that, share that, such that you're not putting the, some, something that might be viewed as self-serving out into the world. We can put it out for you tell your story, and then you can share with everybody you like. That's a great idea. Thank you, Jen, and thank you, Creative Coast, for doing that. That's, I, if I would make a recommendation, do find something right now, because I know many of you are doing good things already. Just find something that you can, you know, you know put a little shout out about what your company's doing or how you're, how you're serving the community. Um, it doesn't have to be you're giving 100% profits away to something. Yeah, that's not, it, it's more of, are you seeing acts of kindness? Or I think I saw uh, another post just recently where they, um, they actually post on the front of their um, building, even though it's closed, where people can post uh, uh, drawings that kids are doing. You know, so just fun things, just simple things. It doesn't have to be over the top. It just needs to be something that, like you said, Jen, good news makes people, it's uplifting. We need more uplifting right now. We really do. Any questions, any topics, any conversations? Anybody want some help? Hey, one of the things I do really well is, you know, pivot and give you really good information and give you some things you can do right now. So if you have a question of like, if you like, what do I do in this situation? We can crowdsource and give you some quick tips on something you can implement right away. That's your chance. I'm, I'm unmuting people, so in case you couldn't unmute yourself, that could have been a problem. <laughs> yeah, sure. And do you want me to stop sharing now so we can just go back into gallery view? Yeah, that'd be good. This way, if people want to come back on camera, we can be. There we go. Ta da! If anybody wants to come on video, they can. If not, that's fine. There's all an right. opportunity. I mean, we can definitely uh, help you all come up with some ideas of what you can do next. <coughs> What are your challenges? Um, I, I'll share something if you, if, if that's okay. Um, I, you know, like I said, I, I, <laughs> I lost Sorry. my job in January. 
Um, so I've just been kind of doing some freelancing and things like that. And um, I've been working with um, Oliver Bentley's. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. That's a super small company. It's basically the owner and a couple SCAD kids that help him out occasionally. Um, he makes um, all natural dog biscuits. And um, he also has a couple other products um, like biodegradable poop bags and all natural dog shampoo bar. Um, and so he, his supplier who makes the actually bakes the biscuits um of course was shut down and so the inventory that he he has very limited inventory and will probably run out before he's able to get another shipment from you know his um his supplier and so we were talking about okay what do what do we what what can we do and so um you know i I kind of uh, tried to advise him with some of the same things that you're talking about. Um, you know, try to, in some of your social posts, keep it a little lighthearted, like everybody's washing their hands and, you know, that sort of thing. Why don't we try to use the dog soap as a way to make that relevant right now where, you know, make, make sure you're washing your dog's paws. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's silly, but it could help make people feel a little bit more maybe not scared and you know also really the dogs are like the big winners here right now um i know that sounds kind of you know weird but um everyone is at home with their dogs and so um you know what are you doing when you're it, you know how are you enjoying this time with your dog um is one of the things that um you know, uh, I would suggest it as a, um, you know, to get some engagement um, from people on social. Um, and, and, and can just, I give you an idea? I'd do a wash your paws challenge and have people, I would have him do a video. Oh, yeah. I would have him doing a video with the, his own shampoo with his dog at the sink. Yeah, washing the yeah. balls and doing the 20 seconds singing happy birthday or singing uh, you know how much is that doggy in the window or something oh yeah um, that's, yeah and then uh and then say hey you know here, here's the challenge show me you know wash the dog's paws or something like that and yeah you know, yeah hashtag for it and you know that's that's something that i can ever project anything that goes viral because you can't but that's something that can go viral if right. it's done, well and done the right way. So right off the bat, wash the paws, get the dog right. doing it, get a video of it. If you're doing 20 seconds, you're probably your video. It's less than a minute video. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah, wash get everybody the you know paws to share it. Challenge. I see everybody's comments there on the side. Yeah. So, so that's what we've been trying to just kind of try, you know, everybody loves dogs pretty much. And, you know, there's so many dog lovers out there that are at home, you know, with their dogs now. So there's a lot of, a lot of ways that we can. We Does can he have plenty make. of the uh, shampoo? You mentioned that his supply chain for his biscuits were down. Yeah. But what other inventory does he have? Right. Well, that, that was the other thing too that I suggested was that we, you know, um, kind of shift the focus a little bit away from the biscuits, not, you know, com not, completely ignore them but shift the focus away from there to some of the other products that he doesn't wouldn't is not going to have inventory issues with which yeah. is the soap and the poop bags and stuff like that so you know i mean That's there's a lot of stuff that we can do with the poop bags too you know that you know this is a pretty you know shitty time right now but <laughs> <laughs> you know like that kind of stuff but and just kind of try to keep it you know a little bit more lighthearted and not to make light of other people who are really, really sick and struggling and that sort of thing, but just kind of. And it's similar to, if you've noticed on movies and things, is what they call product placement. So yeah. you're going to make a video and have product placement because it's Right, product. right, right. So you're not like hardcore selling, yeah. but it's sort of in the background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. Great. People need to laugh at the poo bags. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm just reading the chat too, as I'm talking. So anyways, that, that's my little, 
you know, whether he, I don't, like I said, I'm kind of freelancing. So, and it's just him. So, you know, I, I am trying to make some good suggestions to him, but you know, if they take off or not, I don't really know, but you know, hopefully they will. Good for you. Good for you. So that's my story. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Can you hear me? Yes. That oh, hi. Hi. Great to see you, Lisa. And uh, thank you, Jen, for doing this. Lisa and I know each other from her Jersey days. Um, Lisa, you know, I, the information was great. In some respects, as a PR boutique PR company, we have to really pull back because in dealing with the news, we have to be really sensitive right now. So I'm working with one client at the moment, you know, who's in the, should I say, uh, travel hospitality business. And we're figuring out how the pitches can still be relevant, you know, within the current climate. Um, as you said, pivoting quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, we have to tread, what's the word, lightly. It, because you don't want to get out there and seem uh, self-serving or, you know, taking advantage. Because I, I don't know in Georgia, but in New Jersey, so much is closed, but hotels are open and, and B&Bs and those kinds of things are allowed to stay open. So it's, I don't know what it's like in Georgia right now, you know, um, so uh, it's kind of, you know, being open, but also being sensitive to the, to the climate is, is basically where we're at right now. Because right, Jen, I, I, we just had that order come down uh, from um, our mayor. We're you know, we, we're a high tourism area. We have a lot of short-term oh, sure. vacation rentals, Airbnbs, and everybody. It's been a vacuum. It's just right. sucked right out. I mean, people aren't coming because they can't come. Right. They're being discouraged to come because sure. you know blah blah blah. So, um, I, but I don't know if the hotels had to close, Jen. I don't know if that if that's coming in this order or not. I did not see anything particular about hotels. It did say that visitors are expected to be treated as residents during this time. Okay. So if they're already here, they are expected to shelter in place. Oh, wow. Mm. Um, I own a condo that just got listed for short-term vacation rental properties um, right before St. Patrick's Day. And so I've got there's two different things happening. I've got people canceling, but now I've also got people starting to plan for May and June. So I think it's gonna be slow and then people will come back. Uh, at least I hope they do. Um, I think I'm, what some of the messages that I'm getting from Airbnb, um, from the people that are asking about availability and what's going on here are actually they're more interested in staying in a home or condominium where they're going to have a kitchen and they have more access mm -hmm. feel like they're not in as much shared space as right. they, if they were in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that's a trend that we're going to see this summer, right? right. People are, we're going to go through this lockdown for however long it's going to be. I mean, two weeks to six weeks, oh, six no, weeks yeah. is what I'm hearing, depending on yeah. who you talk to. Mm -hmm. um, but then people are going to get bored. And, you know, if, if people are smart, we could reopen the beaches and we could reopen some restaurants and things like that and get a little bit back to normal. I think everyone's, all the, you know, local leaders and state leaders are having to react and take huge precautions because people are not being smart. People are not doing what they've been asked to do. True. So I, I don't know. I mean, our beaches are closed. That, that's just crazy. Yeah. Because yeah. what, I mean, I should be able to go for a walk on the beach. Right. Unfortunately, they might've seen what was going on in Florida during spring break. And uh, they just don't want to it, you know. I know it's, a, of course, different situation. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, it would be like I don't know what's going on in the Hamptons or out on Long Island. I, I think they're open. I don't know. Yeah. I think, uh, Deb, um, I think you made the point of the pivoting, <clears throat> and right. it, it really is literally going to be day by day. I think, yeah, we all looked at last week and say, what a year that was. It felt like forever, and I think it's getting adjusted to this constant don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. uh, not knowing anything's may flatten out and we'll get more into a 
a, a mode, but the point being is you, as a, a business owner, as an entrepreneur, we have to pivot and constantly be aware of what's the next thing because things may shift and change and we need to be ready for that. Um, I, I, what I did just see in one of my um, groups, whatever that I belong to, somebody was asking a very similar question about tourism. And they said some of the things you can talk about are either past vacations mm -hmm. and again, user generated content. Uh, so do, do ask people to share the best memories, where they've been, that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, what they're thinking about coming forward. So giving mm -hmm. some uh, visioning and, you know, you can even do vision boards. I mean, you can get really creative and do some things, just mm -hmm. getting people to think happy thoughts. Sure. And what, I, what's I get it. I mean, sure. Yeah. So I mean, we, we that's I'm sorry, but we recently, you know, one of the things that we do quite a bit is um, work with bloggers and the media to go visit the place, though. And so right now, of course, you're not having much of that. Um, but we've been um, sharing, check this recent blog post out about this, uh, you know, person's visit for a virtual visit, that kind of thing, you know, for a diversion. Yeah. Yeah. Just to keep, 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 the, keep the destination uh, top of mind for when everything gets back to normal. Right, right. And I think the more that you can even do the, the collaborative efforts, you know, again, bloggers, influencers, your local chambers, things like that. I mean, here in Savannah, Visit Savannah is very proactively, you know, saying keeping top of mind and putting out photos and all kinds of things. And mm -hmm. the more you can, I think, collaborate uh, with anyone is gonna help you. So I think right, you, you know you. a lot of that, but yeah, the more of that is just gonna help you. Right, you yeah, know, so it's funny you say that because also I've been a member, uh, of the Princeton Mercer Regional Chamber for a couple of years now, and they've been great. And they're now, uh, I don't know if your chamber did this, something to think about, has a um, Facebook group of all the members. So all the members are now just sharing amongst themselves what they're doing to stay relevant and asking each other questions very easily. You know, so they, they've been really good. The chamber's been really good. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It was really a wonderful, as I knew it would be, um, uh, webinar. You know, really awesome. good. Thanks. What else, Jeff? Hey, ladies. Hello. Just something random I wanted to throw out to everyone and your respective businesses, in case you didn't know, but next week, I believe it's the 31st, is National Crayon Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have anybody creative in your life, Put together a coloring book page, put it on your website, put it on your social media, have it so parents or grandparents can download it at home. For the dog business, that would probably work really well too if you had like a dog illustration. Just one of those random things. I have one client that's hanging with me and I just did a drawing of their mascot, which is an old truck. But anybody you know, it's, it's kind of a horrible thing that's happening right now but there's a lot of kids stuck inside. So there's a lot yeah. of kids that could probably use something to color and draw on. So I wanted to throw that out there. And also Jen and Lisa, thank you for your time today. Yes. Mm. Awesome. Love it, Jess, yeah. good idea. And, Great idea. Yeah. Hmm. What would you do for the Creative Coast? So, Jen and Lisa, I met you both before I was part of uh, Codebase. Yeah. Um, so for Creative Coast, you guys have so many things going on. Maybe just a general drawing, like that covers computers and techs and, you know, Creative Coast has so many <laughs> creative angles <laughs> that it could be something as like paintbrushes and art supplies and laptops and computers and just like a little representation of so many different aspects of creative coasts like kind of a crazy large drawing i have something if you want something i will donate it to you guys for all the co-working space you gave me over the years i even think maybe one of those were the connect the dot not the connect dot, but you draw we had the one two three so they have we mm -hmm. have actually draw it and then color it yep that's so a double the one activity. we did yeah so something like that just wanted to throw that out to you guys all because it was something I, I found last month when I was doing their social media plan. And I was like, oh, this is great. Coloring book. I'm a big kid, so I love coloring stuff. And now that this has all happened, I'm like, well, we're all sitting at home now. Yeah. I awesome. love that idea. Awesome. Well, let's great. do that. Jess, let's talk offline. Okay. I'll great send you an arrow. Thank you. 
All right, if there's no other questions, we'll wrap it up. Be uh, conscious of people's times because you need to get back out there and create. There you go. <laughs> and um, we'll make the, I, I have a PDF of the slides available. Uh, oh, thank I'll you. make sure that Jen gets some and they, they'll put it out there for you guys. So awesome, right. thank you. Okay, so wait, one quick thing, because I, I joined a little late. What is there a hashtag if you want to share anything on Twitter about today's webinar? Ooh, what's your hashtag, Jen? I don't know. <laughs> Caitlin, hey, what's our hashtag? <laughs> Okay. Our social media I'm, person. I've just been using a uh, hashtag creative coast <laughs> for everything. But if we want to specialize something, um, I mean, I, I feel like it creative. I think creative coast hashtag is good because nobody's okay. not many people use that. I think there's like, there's a few people out there who use it for where they're at or, you know, but it's basically just us. Okay. No problem. Thank you, Debbie. We appreciate again, it. Of course. So I appreciate your, everybody's time. Awesome. And again, I stories about your customers that you want to share that are doing cool things in the community or for their customers, get, get info to myself or Kate under hashtag good news. Okay. Thanks. All right. Be Thank well, you. everybody. Stay well. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.